You could stay in this caboose. Or stay in your camper at this campground. Find out how next. Welcome to the channel, I'm Liz. And I'm Paul, and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you may just have an exciting time here at this campground. We are at the KOA South Point in Yemassee, South Carolina, and we've been pretty surprised by all that we found here. It's got quite a bit going for it here. I mean, we're close to Buford, South Carolina, which is a, if you're into history, you just have to, you just have to see Buford. Yeah, and if you're going up and down the east coast and looking for a stopover it seems like this campground is mostly used for a stopover but we think it really could be used for something more we've been here six days i think you could easily find something to do for three or four days there's oh, so easily. much here yeah yeah it's used uh, we've noticed um, in our time here that it is used mostly for overnight stops you could easily use it as a base and go to places like charleston or buford or savannah yeah, I mean, it, there is so much. In fact, today we're going to Charleston, South Carolina, which is a little bit over an hour away. Savannah is less than an hour away. And then yesterday we were in Beaufort, which is a postcard of a town. Talk about that town. Well, I really didn't know anything about the town until we got here and, and somebody told us the, about it and we went and checked it out. It has one of the largest collections of antebellum mansions in the country because the Union took it over during the Civil War and they used it as a hospital zone. The mansions didn't get burned down like a lot of them did in this area. And the residents didn't fight, you know, they fled. So, yeah, yeah. so there was no burning really that happened there. So it's a beautiful collection. And it's one of the oldest towns in the country, right? Yeah, it was first discovered by Europeans in the 1500s, I, horrible with dates, but around 1512-ish, uh, the Spanish came and, and settled in the area. And then they got run out by the by the French, and then the, they came back, and then the English came, and it's had a very robust history. Yes, and it's on the coast, so you've got you know the beautiful water. Um, we took a horse and carriage ride. I mean, so much to see, and it was you know about 30 minutes from here. And it's definitely worth seeing. So if you come here, you at least want to allow time for that. But let's talk about the campground and what all there is here. So it's a KOA, there's over 60 RV sites, but I'm sure you're curious about this thing behind us. So the caboose is uh, something you can rent out and you can sleep in. It sleeps up to six people. It's really cool to sleep in and there's only one downside to it. What's that? There's no bathroom. <laughs> there's actually no kitchen or bathroom. There is a bathroom right across the road from it, but it would be so cool, you know, to have the kids sleep in it or just sleep in it for a night. Yeah, and, and there is a bathroom, I mean, a, I don't know. A stone's throw. Yeah, stone, literally a stone's throw away from the place. And they have another interesting thing you can sleep in and it's a Charleston, South Carolina trolley that's been converted into uh, sleeping quarters. Again, it does not have a bathroom, but it's super cute. It's, it's all brass and mahogany inside, and it even has the hanging leather straps that you would have held onto when it was a trolley. Think of it as like staying in a tent, but more than a tent. <laughs> <laughs> you're off the ground and you're in a real bed. Yeah. I um, mean, that one sleeps up to four people. Now there are some rustic cabins as well as some deluxe cabins, so you don't need a camper. The RV sites are, most of them have sewer. I'd have to say that it sounds like there's a lot of traffic and we can really hear it where we're standing. I should tell you that we are standing next to the 95. This campground is very convenient because it is next to the 95 and it's only because we're standing here that it seems super loud in our site we don't really notice it yeah but you don't notice it until you're outside uh, in the camper in our camper anyway it's i never even it doesn't register yeah if you're looking for absolute total peace and quiet this is not going to no, be your this campground. is not going to be the place no <laughs> but but we don't think the traffic is that bad and the convenience of being right on 95 is is really good however it does have some remoteness to it in that it is about 30 minutes to the nearest grocery store yeah you're gonna you want to have everything you need when you get here if you're going to be here for a week you know, make sure you have your provisions for that time period. Uh, well, now they have provisions here too. Oh yeah, yeah, they do. They do have a little cafe and semi bar in the in the uh, the main building. 
Um, this we were, serves wine and beer, but we were talking provisions, and of course, typical man, he's going to go to booze. <laughs> the important things in life, yeah. But they have a store. They have a store where you can get some, you know, essential food, and they have a pizzeria, so you can just get something to eat without having to leave the campground. Yeah. You could stay here and not leave the campground until you're ready to go. To give you a little bit more of a tour of the campground, there are lots of pull-throughs and back-ends, and there are some deluxe sites. There's at least one with a private patio, and there also are some tent sites. There's a nice looking dog park, horseshoes, cornhole, there's oversized chests, and there is an extensive playground. Um, it looks like, <laughs> looks like there's a lot of fun stuff going on there, including an interesting mine feature. They also have a pool, but I have to say that my favorite thing about this campground is there are three lakes. You can walk around, there's plenty of hiking right here, just you know, flat hiking, because we are in South Carolina, it is flat, but you could easily go for you know a mile or two and go around the lakes. And what did we see in the lakes? We saw three alligators, <laughs> pretty good size alligators. Uh, so yeah, just be aware that there are, there, there are alligators out, out, out and about when you're gonna, if you wanna go hiking. I mean, they, they're they not gonna chase you down, I don't think. Right, so. but if you have a small dog, you wanna keep the dog away from the water. And also know that if you're up north and you think you have to go to Florida to see alligators, no, you don't. You, they are right here in South Carolina. And certainly, you know, it was fun for, fun to see them. And there's yeah. also turtles and all kinds of, of birds, lots, lots of birds because of the wetlands. Yeah, I actually was disappointed that I didn't see more alligators when we were in Florida. We went to the Everglades and I figured I'll see tons of alligators there, literally. And uh, we had to drive quite a ways to be able to see any. We took a, an airboat tour and, and unbeknownst to us, the, the, the airboat tour that we took was in brackish water. And, and if, if you know about alligators, they like fresh water. They don't particularly like salt. We learned a lot on that trip, and that is that some airboat companies will start up and you think that you are gonna, you think in Everglades you're gonna see alligators, but they were there just because of the location to get tourists, not because of the location to see alligators. We yeah. were two miles away from where all the alligators were. Yep. Yeah. Close, but no cigar. There is something called the Old Sheldon Church about, what, two miles from the campground? Maybe three or four. I'm not a history buff, but I am a photographer and I just really appreciate the architecture of this church. When was it built? It was built in the early 1700s, 1712, I think. Or maybe 1745. That one Oh, might have that's been. right. We saw another old church in, in Buford, and that was 1712. Mm -hmm. Right. But this one is 1745. You're right. This one, we can safely say, was built in the 1700s, and it's a ruin. It was burned during the Revolutionary War. They rebuilt it. It was burned in the Civil War. And it's only 10 minutes from the park, and even closer, just a mile from the campground, is an old plantation house. It's called Frampton's Plantation House. It was built originally, the original structure was built in the 1700s, and General Sherman burned it down. They replaced that, and the, what we're looking at now is 1865 or 1868, somewhere around there, and then they've since added onto it. It functions as the visitor center, but that if you want to get the feel of the South Carolina charming old plantation houses, that's the one to see. And it's like a mile from the campground. Yeah, yeah you could walk to it. It's that close. It'd be a good walk, but you could do it. Well, for deciding how long you want to be here, you know, we figure a day for Charleston, a day for Savannah, and a day for Beaufort, and then just a day to just relax and enjoy what's here. But it's up to you if you were going to just do one. I mean, we've only so far done Beaufort, and we highly recommend it. So last night we went into the the main lodge to the ale house and wine bar. It's beer and wine, and the ale, the air. What's what's the local beer? It's an it's a dark ale. I don't remember the name of it. Yeah. And uh, I, maybe I drank too much of it to remember. <laughs> well, come in and check it out because that's something else that you rarely find in a campground is yeah. is a little bar where you can just you know have a little happy hour and just and not and know that you can just you know toddle back to your campsite. 
So one thing, you know, this is a KOA, so it was not cheap. Do you remember what we paid a night? I try to forget that <laughs> as soon as I give them my credit card. You can look up, look it up. I mean, they are posted online. Now, if you're a Thousand Trails members like we are, we're, we're members of this campground membership where we can camp for free once we pay our dues. Right on the other side of the lake is the Thousand Trails, the Oaks at South Point. The reason why that we ended up here is they actually were full. This was a last minute booking. We decided to stay in Florida an extra month. So we had to move everything and there wasn't room for us there. I went over there and checked it out. I thought this campground's a little prettier. There's a, there's a spaced out a little more, but I really don't know much about the Oaks at South Point. I don't know if they have a pool or anything like that, but you're gonna get you know, the same location. That, that this one is. And actually the Thousand Trails, if you can get into it, it's probably a little quieter because it's a little f set back a little bit more from the highway. But we're very happy here and, and uh, we don't feel like we've uh, suffered by, by having to be here other than having to pay for it. Right, right. And that is the beauty of Thousand Trails. We stay in it so much that when we get out of it, it's a treat, but it's something that we can afford because we haven't been paying for campsites. Yeah, we save enough on Thousand Trails um, camping that the, you know, the occasional um, out-of-pocket campground is, doesn't hurt. So one of the only regrets that I have from tra of traveling is going too fast. I remember when we were going from Washington to South Dakota, we went, we were just blitzing across the top. And we went through areas that where I'm sure there were some interesting things to see, but we stayed one night and jumped one night and jump. If you can stop and enjoy your travel. So tell us in the comments, what was a, a surprise that you had? Some place you stopped and it was much more than you thought it was gonna be.